At this time, uh, we're going to go to our scripture reading. And our text today uh, is in Psalm 31. Psalm 31. And uh, we want to talk about the value of prayer. Psalm chapter 31. So if you have your Bibles, uh, feel free to, to look at Psalm 31. And if there ever was a text that I think that fits our what we're going through today, I think this is it. Now, this is actually one of the Passion Psalms. And as I read it, I was like, oh my goodness, how uh, relevant it is for our time today. And so I wanted to uh, use this text uh, from Psalm. It is a uh, Psalm... Uh, a cry of distress, really. And so, let's look at Psalm 31. And we'll, we'll read a few verses there. In Psalm 31, 1, In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteous deliver me. And then he says in verse 2, Incline your ear to me, and rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. And then if we skip down a, a few verses, I want to call your attention to verse 9 and 10. The writer of this psalm is in great distress, and he says, Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes waste away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. Look at verse 11. I'm the scorn of my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. And I couldn't help but thinking as I read this passage of Scripture how so many people today are uh, afraid. Afraid of each other. And I can understand that. And when, I, of course, I work at the hospital and, and you know, as chaplains, uh, we're trying to make phone calls to rooms that are isolation so that we're not contaminating and using up the PPE equipment. But as we go out in the community, we, we're told to stay uh, at least six feet apart. People wear a mask, and sometimes uh, people will almost run from you uh, if you get close to them. And it's a scary time. And as I read this passage, I think about the, the author who is having whatever's going on in his life. He, he has cried so many tears that he is... Uh, He's just dried up. His, his, his tears are completely dried up. His bones are wasting away. And so to someone who's in a lot of anguish and very ill and, and emotional and spiritual illness of some type. And as I think about that, I think about how the psalm starts out. And he starts out with a cry. We talked about on Wednesday night. We offered, we put out the question about uh, a lament. Is it okay to lament? And uh, the difference between a lament and a complaint. And we talked about the fact that someone has said that a complaint is when we cry out about God, and a lament is when we cry out to God. And I think the writer here is more than anything crying out to God for help. Yeah, we can complain sometimes, but we, we really sometimes want to just God, want God to know what we're going through. And He already does, but we want to cry out to God. But you'll notice in the Psalms that oftentimes, and in this case, that the lament starts out, but it ends up turning to praise. And trust. And so that's where our prayers should always take us. Is we can start out and tell God about our problems and lament to God, but in the end we turn our complaints, our laments, our frustrations, our fears to trust. 
And so the question I have today is this, what is the value of prayer? We live in a society today where uh, some people value prayer very much and others say, I, I don't want prayer. <laughs> there was a study done a few years ago by a couple sociologists. It was down in the Carolinas, in North Carolina, after Hurricane Florence came through, and it did a lot of destruction, especially uh, floodwaters, fresh floodwaters come through, and there was a lot of destruction. And as a result, the people were uh, experiencing uh, a lot of, as you might know, uh, turmoil, pain. And so they did a study of about 400 residents, and they asked them uh, to describe their hardships and what they were going through. And then they, at the end, they offered their thoughts and prayers. And they even tied it to money, how much they would be willing to pay. And here's what they discovered. The people that call themselves Christians, that were religious, valued prayer very much. And they were even willing to pay up to oh, even more than $4 for a prayer, which is interesting. However, those who were non-religious were willing to pay almost $4 for someone not to pray for them, especially if it was a stranger. So uh, to have a Christian stranger pray for them, they did not want. They would be willing to pay like three fifty, dollars as much as that, to keep someone, for, a, a stranger, from praying for them. Whereas the Christians valued it very much. Which, according to a Denver psychologist, brings up an interesting point. <clears throat> Some people apparently do not value prayer very much. They don't want our thoughts and prayers. And it could be maybe they're agnostic, maybe they're atheists, or maybe they don't want just platitudes. They want action. And even the Bible talks about that, you know, we just don't pray for people, that we have to put action with. Faith and prayer without action is useless and it's dead. And James said, you know, if someone comes to you and says, I'm hungry, and you just say, okay, I'll pray for you, what good is that? And so, it is important to have faith and action. And also, um, you know, that we understand that sometimes people are going through a time in their life where maybe they're not able to pray. And maybe they don't want prayer. That's hard for us to understand, but recently I was visiting a family. A person was dying, and uh, the family had asked me to pray. And most of the time, people want us to pray. They want prayer when their loved one's dying. Very seldom does anyone say they don't. And so as I got ready to pray, this one, uh, the man, stormed out of the room abruptly. And then when I finished the prayer and walked out, he came back in. And I didn't get a chance to uh, talk to him. I didn't get a chance to find out what was going on. But I imagine that there was so much maybe anger and frustration that he just wasn't able to receive that. I don't know. There was a, a group of atheists who uh, put up a billboard uh, outside of the Super Bowl. And it said something to the effect that, uh, that Hail Marys only work at football games. And they did a press release where they said that, uh, that people should stop believing in prayers. And, you know, they have a point in one sense that I, I, uh, <coughs> I personally think that, uh, that it's kind of foolish for us to pray that God would let our favorite team win the game. Or if we're playing the game that, that we would win. Uh, or that we would score a touchdown. Uh, I mean, you can pray those prayers, of course. But I think there's a lot more important things that we could pray. On the other hand, I think the atheists were wrong if they believe that prayer does not matter, 
that it does not work. I believe it does. I was watching the news and I saw a prayer vigil outside of a hospital. And people holding up signs. And one of those signs that they were holding up said, Prayer changes things. And I believe it does. And I want to talk, what is the value of prayer? I want to talk about how prayer changes things. And first of all, I believe prayer changes us. If it doesn't change the situation, if it doesn't change anything else, it changes us, if we think about that. Because when we pray, we're connecting with God in a way that changes us and who we are. And I think for no other reason right now that we ought to be praying because we need that kind of prayer and love. There uh, is a modern prayer that's pretty popular that is prayed often, especially in AA circles. It's called the Serenity Prayer. And it goes something like this, Lord, help me to accept the things I cannot change. And give me the a courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And in that prayer, it's not really about changing even the situation so much as it is about changing me. Millions of people have prayed that prayer, and they pray it uh, on a regular basis, to have serenity and courage and wisdom. And what that is saying is that we realize that sometimes that maybe that this prayer is not going to stop the hurricane from its path. Maybe it will. And maybe it's not going to uh, completely prevent disease. Maybe it will. But if anything, it's going to help me to change. And that's a start. So prayer changes things. First of all, it changes us. There's something about going to God when we get, in, get serious with God that we begin to change. And I think through this pandemic, most of us, I would say at least Christians, have found our prayer closet once again. We want to continue to pray. But prayer changes us. Another thing that I believe is important about prayer is <laughs> prayer, it really gives us strength to face the challenges of life, doesn't it? Prayer gives us the strength to face the challenges of life because in this life we're going to have storms and we're going to have all kinds of problems. And if we want to be able to endure those storms, we need the strength to do it. And sometimes we need supernatural strength. Sometimes people say, well, God won't put on more, me more than, than I can handle. Well, sometimes life does. Maybe God don't, but sometimes life does. Sometimes we need supernatural strength. One time I remember I went into a room. I was called to pray as a chaplain in a certain hospital, and I was going into this room, and uh, the patient had died. And when I asked if they wanted to have prayer, the man said, it's too late. It's too late to pray now. And it reminded me when Mary, at the feet of Jesus, said, Lord, where were you? If you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But I said to this family, I said, well, I'm here to pray mostly for you. You're going to need the strength in the days ahead. I want to pray for you. And so prayer is important because we need strength. And as the writer cries out, Lord, I'm in distress. It's okay to let God know that. And, and listen, I've seen God do miracles. I've seen God heal. I've seen God move mountains. And God, I'm not saying He's going to do that every time, but I've seen God move. And so, uh, if He doesn't, then God will give us the strength to endure whatever comes our way. 
That's faith, by the way. Faith is not always telling God what to do, but faith is like Jesus praying, Lord, even if you don't take this cup from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. That's faith. And so, prayer is important because it really does give us strength to face the days ahead. And then we find also that prayer is important because it really gets us in alignment with God and His will so that we can find healing and wholeness. We can find healing and wholeness because we are in line with God's will. Now what I'm trying to say is this, that when we begin to pray our priorities change, our attitudes change, and our actions and our life changes. Something changes within us that also changes our life. And that once we get in sync with God and we're in the will of God, we begin to walk in the steps of God. Then we are in alignment with God's will and we are able to accept wholeness and healing. If we're Christians and we're walking in the steps of the Lord, we're probably going to rely more on God, trust more on God, and we're going to do more the right thing, hopefully. Therefore, we're going to be looking out for our brothers and sisters. We're going to look out for our neighbors. And we're going to take care of ourselves. And that makes the world a better place. Because we're doing what we need to do. And so I believe we need to pray because prayer changes us. And I believe it gives us strength to face the challenges ahead. But I also believe that it helps us to align with God and His will for our lives. So that we will be in a place that we can accept His holy, His wholeness and His uh, healing. Whatever God brings our way. And I don't know what tomorrow holds. I only know who holds tomorrow. That song says it best. Uh, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from the sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry o'er the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today He walks beside me, for He knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. And so today I encourage you, like the writer of the psalm, to cry out to God, put your trust in Him, and to know that God has this, that it's in God's hands, and He's a big God, and He can handle our pain, He can handle our laments, He can even handle our complaints. Today I pray the Lord's blessings upon you. As your musicians come, we want to pray for you right now, wherever you are. We ask you to pray with us, and we pray this simple prayer. Uh, whoever you are, pray this with us, and you can repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins, for I'm a sinner. Help me, Lord, to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you prayed that prayer with us. And if you prayed it for the first time, feel free to let us know. And we'll be glad to continue to pray for you and, and help you in your Christian walk today.